Hi everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, since many of you have asked me to make a reparting video because I didn't do them in quite a while, I decided to take a look with you guys at this orchid which I put off reparting. This is a new orchid I purchased a few months ago. It keeps blooming, so yeah, but it was due for a repot and I would just like to show you how the orchid lo looks like and uh, also tell you a little bit about the media because I discovered this is not peat moss. It is actually a coconut husk. It's very fine coconut husk. I really do not remember the specific name for it, but I'll find it. I'll add it in the description or the title of this video. Now, because it's not peat moss, it might not be acid and it might not have a lot of nutrients to kill off the orchid. It can be just as uh, coconut husk. But the problem is it still suffocates the root system. And I have quite a lot of roots which do not look good. And also I have a rotten leaf which was trapped here and also some pseudobulbs which were trapped here. They don't look too good. And I also have some snail action of course. Here is a little bugger. I'll have to clean off this orchid very, very well. Where did it go? Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna kill it some other way. So anyway, there we go. This is why I like to repot any new orchid. Also, the root system, I just want to check it out, see how it's doing in order to better assess the orchid and give it a better chance at living. So, you see how this orchid looks right now? I'm just going to come back when I totally clean it up and see how the root system looks and pop this girl up in a decent media and a decent pot. And we are back. What I did was I washed, I actually showered the orchid, not necessarily the entire orchid, but I showered the orchid's roots and pseudobulbs uh, to just get rid of all that excessive media. And I also, very important, I also tried to remove all the dried um, leaves or remains of leaves and so on, whatever I could find. And this is because those are good hiding places for snails. And uh, I do hate snails. Alrighty, what I discovered here was a little tiny growth, which is very pale, simply because it was in the media, very deep in the media, and it did not photosynthesize. And I'm hoping it's not, it is not starting to rot. I was not gentle with it because I didn't notice it. So hopefully this will survive. Poor little thing. It was just so buried into the media. Okay. Then, after washing the orchid, I sprayed, absolutely soaked it with hydrogen peroxide. Now, I don't spray all the orchid necessarily, but I do spray the entire root system and the base of the pseudobulbs as well, and in between the pseudobulbs as well, in these little crevices, and also in between uh, the pseudobulb and the leaf here. This is a good hiding place as well, so I just sprayed here really, really well. I'm not really worried about rot and anything because I'm using a fan, so after I repot this orchid, I'm gonna place it in front of the fan for an hour or so, and um, or, or even more, and everything will be good. I did make a video about this. Alrighty, so after I sterilized practically the orchid's root system, I made sure to kill off any snails I might have. It is time to clean this orchid up. And this means removing the roots that are dead. Now this root, can you see this? When I press on it, it is not stiff and also some water seems to ooze out of it. Now this is a dead root. The color tells you it's dead as well, but sometimes brown roots are still stiff. This, however, it is not. Hopefully you can see here the ooziness of it. Okay, so I'm pretty safe to cut this one. So what I do is I get my scissors. I spray the scissors with alcohol, just the tip, and then I flame it just a bit, and this sterilizes it very well. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I cannot actually cut with my left hand, but I, what I will do is cut the, um, the root that is actually mushy, like this. And I will go uh, through the root system and figure out which root is dead, which is alive. And I'm sorry for that horrible noise. And uh, yeah, just clean up the orchid very, very well. Remove any remains, debris that I might have, and so on. Practically give it a good clean up, fresh start, and afterwards I will repot it. So I'll go about my things. Look at this root. This again is a dead root. Do you see the villamen is coming right off? This is definitely a dead root. So what I will do is clean the roots as best as I can and um, just keep the life roots and I will be right back. And we are back. Not much left, I have to admit. Uh, I thought she would be in a better condition, but apparently no. 
So I uh, cleaned off the roots as best as I could. I missed one. Okay, this is dead. I will have to cut this as well. In any case, uh, I did the best job that I could. And now it is time to actually pot it up. And the mix I'm using for this particular orchid, which is an Oncidium intergeneric, is my uh, bark and a little bit of sphagnum moss mix. It's just uh, more bark than sphagnum moss. This actually keeps a little bit more moisture, but it also gives an airy, um, an airy environment for the roots. And I think this will do great, coupled with my clear plastic pot, which has side holes for more ventilation. I discovered my Oncidium orchids do absolutely fantastic in this uh, mix-up in my environment. And my environment is a distinct four-season environment, so I practically have all the seasons and all the good and bad stuff with them. So in any case, I will cut that root that I missed. I'll pot it up and most probably I will use a stake to stabilize it because um, the root system cannot hold this orchid into place without wobbling too much. And I will try to pot it with this new growth on top of the media as much as I can because I really want this thing to live. I'm not sure if it's gonna make it. It's, it's not looking great. But anyway, we'll see. Okay, so here is the finished product. I did stake this orchid using a, uh, an orchid stake or a bamboo stake. It is not the most, uh, it, you know, it still wobbles, but it's not excessive. So this will work for this orchid. And uh, also I tried to leave this little new growth as much as I could above the media as well. Because of the placement, one of the back bulbs is still a bit deep, but it's not going to be a problem. I, um, I think it's going to get a lot of ventilation on that side. I tried to not overdo it. Now, in case your orchid is not stable and it doesn't have a flower spike for you to pin, you can simply use this bamboo stake closer to the center of the bulb here, maybe in the back most probably, and actually tie this section of the orchid with a zip tie, not too tight, but tie it to the bamboo stake and that will work as well. It will keep the orchid in place as much as a, as a flower spike will. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do now is actually I'm gonna go and water this orchid so it gets some hydration. This is because that's how I do things. I know many people do not like to water after repotting simply because, uh, you know, you might rot roots. Never happened to me actually and uh, I don't know, I just want to get this orchid hydrated or keep it hydrated as much as I can, keeping in mind it doesn't have too many roots. But I would say it is um, a good candidate for a full recovery and I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some ideas. If you want to see more videos with orchids, just subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have suggestions for videos or questions for me, just leave me a comment and I'll answer you. And thank you for watching and suggesting this video. I saw you guys were bored of repotting stuff, but the truth is, every orchid has um, a different problem when you repot it. Alrighty, so I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.